Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign here with the gorilla himself, Nick Campbell, and we are live from, well not live, this is recorded, but we are at NAB. This is live, we're, we're live, live, live right in person, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah, real, folks. Um, I, you pinch real. me, pinch me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we're here talking with Nick and we got a booth here set up, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing here at NAB. Yeah, it's the first year we have our own Grayscale Gorilla booth. We're part of the uh, Baxon partner pavilion so we're super excited to be here all day and hang out with our customers it's really cool actually to have people that use our products and see our training come up and we get to talk to them and interact with them so it's been a great first day here at NAB it's been fun you, you sick of Vegas yet are we good we're going we got pinball tomorrow we're, we're plenty, still rolling I got plenty of time to get <laughs> we survived good. day one yeah. all right so uh, let's talk a little bit about your presentations you got uh, one tomorrow right and so what are you going to be talking about in your presentations coming up? Yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to show, uh, it's tomorrow at 9.30 Pacific time if you guys want to watch live. Um, it's going to be all about my top 20 favorite tips to speed up Cinema 4D. And it's going to be something, you know, a little bit more geared towards somebody new to Cinema 4D. But I guarantee no matter how long you've been using Cinema 4D, there'll be at least one or two tips in there to speed up. Not just making stuff, like how to actually produce but also how to render. So I'm gonna go through the physical render and show how to really speed up your rendering because you know, there's a lot of great renders coming out and experimenting with all this stuff, but we find that over half of Cinema 4D users still use the physical or standard wow. render. Yeah, so we want to make sure, you know, no matter where you choose to render, that you're being as efficient as possible. So we're excited to uh, to get that one going tomorrow. Awesome, awesome. So what what times were those again? Yeah, so tomorrow is at 9:30 uh, Pacific time, so it'll be a little bit later for you guys um, uh, on the East Coast, uh, and also. Um, the Wednesday, we have an Ask GSG. So uh, Chris Schmidt usually does Ask GSG every Wednesday at 1 o'clock uh, Central Time. So since we're not in Chicago for him to record that, we're going to do a live version of it, and it's me and Chris together answering everyone's Cinema 4D questions. So if you guys have Cinema 4D questions, make sure to hit us up on Twitter because we're looking actually for uh, questions to answer during the presentation, and we're also going to be answering them live in the audience. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, all right. Cool. So yeah, tweet him at uh, great GSG3D. Get in your questions before what Wednesday at Wednesday one. At, uh, Wednesday is at eleven thirty uh, Pacific. That makes it when it would air typically at, uh, yeah, at yeah. East Coast It'll time. Be close yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, close enough. A little bit hour off. Awesome. So, uh, what's happening on the blog? Where we uh, where are we looking at coming to GrayscaleGorilla.com? Uh, so tomorrow we're posting a tutorial actually all about speeding up physical render. Nice. It's going to be a couple of things I'm going to talk about at the presentation, but a bit a little bit more in depth. Uh, we have a ton of new products coming out in the next six months, including a new HDRI pack. We also have a signal update that we've been working on. Uh, as everyone knows, you know, Dead Mouse was working on his own graphics, and I know uh, you, you were talking, BroGraph guys were talking, and we were also talking to him, and we helped him uh, fix a problem that he was having with beats per minute. Now, he was trying to animate to his music, but because he's a musician, electronic musician, he was more used to programming like samples as you would a song rather than animate. So what we basically built with the new tab and signal is the ability to program your animations as if they were samples. So imagine you have a kick drum and you're making a song and it goes boom, 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 boom. That's pretty typical of the, of the music, right? Now imagine you're in Signal and you can program that so that it happens every time on the beat. And of course you can get more complex with other drum patterns, you can bring in bass patterns, but we're trying to find new ways to animate in Cinema 4D that don't always require you to jump into the timeline. And so uh, he actually used our, our plugin to, to make some of his uh, animations. So we're really excited, you know, if he could use it, you know, and and we and we love it. I think our our audience will love it as well. That's awesome. Dead Mouse, a C4D fan. How about that? We got some heavy hitters. We got someone bigger than Nick using Cinema 4D, That's friends. Right. Got sure. <laughs> awesome. So, just one last question for you. I know you're a busy guy here at NAB, but uh, you're doing your workflow tips. I think workflow is very important. So, what do you think is you know you get these little nuggets of workflow tips. What's your biggest workflow tip that once you learned it it was like totally like opened your eyes you're like what why was I doing that this whole time man uh, that's a good question I think w one of the things I really focused on was getting my render settings and render presets set up 
any any time that I do something twice in in Cinema 4D, I'm I'm like mad at myself that I didn't make a preset way to do it. So the things that I really enjoy are things like a new .c4d file. If you make a new .c4d file and save it, uh, we actually have a quick tip on our website. If you save that scene file, um, every time you open a new scene file in Cinema 4D, it will be however you saved it. So if, for example, I do a lot of square renders for our Instagram, and you, you guys might do that as well. Yeah. If you constantly find yourself going into the render settings and changing the ratio to a different one than the default, you can go ahead and do that once and save it out as a new .c4d file, save it in your same uh, hierarchy as your Cinema 4D uh, install, mm -hmm. and that means every time you open a new scene file, it will be on your settings, not the default cinema settings. So for me, it's about, uh, and, and by the way, this is the same as um, other stuff I'm talking about tomorrow, setting up better defaults for all of your tools. You know, I want you to think about your Cinema 4D layout and the tools that you use as a workshop. If you were to set up a physical workshop, you would put the tools and the things that you use the most closest to you. Right. And so th those are the things that once I realized I have to treat a, this software as if it was a physical space because there's only limited screen space, right. that's when cinema became much faster and I could grab the tools I was, I was using constantly and, and, and be able to be more efficient in my workflow. Awesome. You're not spilling coffee all over your all over <laughs> I'm your still stuff. spilling coffee awesome, all over. Awesome. That's, that's a different problem. We'll right. solve that. That's a different plug <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out yeah, to man. talk to us here at NAB. And again, stay tuned all week. We got Nick's uh, talk tomorrow, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. We got C4D Live. So all week long on C4DLive.com. And again, Nick from GrayscaleGorilla.com. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking Thanks, to us here. Always good to see you. Cheers. And uh, that's it for now. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody. Bye.